Great. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are Hi, I'm Janet Baker, and on behalf of Paper Tiger, we want to thank you for attending the webinar today. Because we know that there are several uh, different levels of Paper Tiger users on the call, we will be covering the basics for those that are new and then lead toward more advanced functions. We have with us today Fred Halgado of Paper Tiger and Ann McGurdy, CEO of Strategize and Organize. Fred will be presenting the basics of getting started with Paper Tiger Online, and Ann will be presenting the life cycle of file management and also what she calls a reality webinar based on real questions that have been asked in our previous webinars. So she will be demonstrating the answers to those questions. Anne is a professional speaker, productivity expert, and author. If you want to learn more about Anne and her services, please visit her website at www.strategizeandorganize.com. She may be in Colorado, but she's nat nationally recognized as, as an expert and works with people throughout, throughout the U.S. in person and virtually. Just to let you know, there is a chat section in the lower right corner of your screen where you can submit questions. Please use the chat section rather than the question section because this is more visible to us. Note that there is a drop-down box with, uh, for who you send your questions to, either to all attendees or to the presenters. Whichever you prefer is good for us. We will try our best to answer questions during the call today, but if we run out of time, we'll, we will be posting the questions and answers on our blog under the webinar category. This is also where we'll, we will be posting the webinar recordings as soon as we can. Um, as a reminder, all attendees for today's webinar will be entered in Paper Tiger's Apple iPad contest ending March 31st. And Anne has also graciously offered 30 free minutes over the phone for anyone interested in more professional one-on-one -on -one assistance. We want to make our webinars as fun and flexible as possible, so feel free to let us know what you want to learn about for future webinars. You can send all feedback to us at sales at thepapertiger.com. Now to get on with the best part, I'll turn the call over to Fred. Hey guys, this is Fred. Um, I'm the product designer here at the Paper Tiger, and I hope to show you around the application a little bit. Like Janet said, um, I'm going to be going over the basics um, of Paper Tiger, just because we know there's a lot of you guys out here that uh, might be using Paper Tiger for uh, your first time, or you're you're eager to learn a little bit more about the basics before you move on with it. So. Um, like I said, I'm going to be covering some of the basics, and I'm going to also get Ann to give us a couple tips here and there um, as far as things that she knows. She's installed uh, Paper Tiger many, many times, and she knows she really knows her stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first question I want to ask you guys is just to get a feel for our audience. How many of you have either just begun using Paper Tiger or have you you've not used Paper Tiger yet and you're waiting to sign up? Just go ahead and raise your hand if you can. Um, on the on the webinar tool. Awesome. So it looks like there's plenty out there. So this will be this will be great for you. Um, so let me just walk you through what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to actually create a Paper Tiger account. Um, then uh, from there, we'll go ahead and import the sample database or a sample database so that I can show you guys some of the content in there and what it looks like. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and create a location, uh, print out some labels to go to the folders in that location, and I'm going to file a couple of items just to show you guys uh, really the basics of how to get started with it. So uh, let's get started by signing up for an account. Um, as you've all seen before, this is our, uh, our website. And um, in order to sign up for an account, you can just click on the top right uh, link up here that says Sign Up Free. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up for a free account for now. And, of course, you know, we get, uh, we get some magic power, so my account is going to transfer to a paid account in a second. But, you know, pretend that didn't happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click here in the Free Forever plan. I'm going to go ahead and fill in my information.
Now, I just want to uh, point out this company field here. Um, and the reason why we ask you for a company, and if you can see here, it also says, uh, or nonprofit organization, group, school, etc., is that uh, we want to customize Paper Tiger for your, uh, you know, for what you do. So we ask you, you we ask you to tell us kind of uh, either what your company is or whether you're going to use it for home use, etc. Either of those is perfectly okay. Um, so here in my email, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put one of my emails here. So I'm going to say Fred PTO webinars. And this will just be a, a temporary account. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my password here. Make sure you type it in the same in both boxes. You know, you get, I'm sure you guys have done this before. You're probably used to it. And um, you know, one of the things you won't see here in the paid accounts, uh, you also have to put in your credit card information, of course. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit create my account and in a couple seconds we should be in Paper Tiger Online. Great, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ask Janet uh, to get our account switched over so if you hang on for one second while she does that um, then we'll be able to go ahead and start the imports. Just to let you know um, our account, the free account does not allow database imports and it will prompt you to uh, you know, to, to buy a paid account. But uh, like I said, give us just a couple minutes and um, and we'll have this account turned over for you. And why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself in the meantime, that way uh, our viewers get to, uh, our listeners get to uh, hear a little bit about you. All right. Um, hi. Thanks, Fred. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Thank you, Janet, for introducing me. Um, I am, my name is Ann McGurdy, and I um, have a company in Colorado called Strategize and Organize. And um, I've been in business since 2002. Um, but the cornerstone of my business when I started to help people get organized in their offices, I knew I needed a tool that was going to help people. And everywhere I looked, I wasn't able to find anything until I came across the Paper Tiger software. I, so I have been working since uh, 2003 helping clients get organized with their files using the Paper Tiger software. People, whether you have a, a home uh, office with basic files, if you're an executive assistant supporting uh, executives, or if you are a small business owner, or if you are a CEO of a large organization, the Paper Tiger works for every type of client that I've been able to work um, with. So I, um, I am a, a great advocate of this product, and I have worked in many different scenarios, from the individuals to corporations. The biggest one I've worked with is um, 1,800 people. They're not all using the Paper Tiger, but companies that are large enough that have that many departments have uses where even small sections could use this product. Uh, give, it, give it a little an idea of what type of people I've worked with and who can use it. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. And looks like we're uh, we're ready to go. We appreciate uh, your introduction. So um, back to um, our webinar here. If you can see, uh, we're now in the dashboard of Paper Tiger, and this is uh, this is the part of the application that kind of gives you an overview of what's happening from day to day. And once you start uh, performing some actions and filing and, and, and getting some stuff done, you'll see you see your recent activity kind of pop up through here. Another thing that I want to mention to you is that um, on the multi-user accounts, you'll see um, all the people that are signed up for your account, and you'll see them here. And you also be able to see who's the administrator in the account, so you can ask them any questions or uh, get them to do anything that uh, needs administrative rights for. So, uh, like I was saying, we're going to go ahead and import a sample database just to, just to give you guys an idea of what um, of what some data in Paper Tiger looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the database imports tab, and you can see we offer two different kinds of services. We offer one service where um, if either you're having trouble importing your database or you're not really sure what to do, that's not a problem. Um, you can go ahead and schedule an appointment with us, and if you click here, um, you'll get this box where you can put in your information, and we'll be able to get back to you and help you out and, and even walk you step by step uh, on how to import your database. Now, if you're more of an expert or you, you kind of uh, want to do it your own way, uh, we also provide an automatic import tool. And 
by clicking that link, you'll see these uh, instructions pop up, and uh, they kind of walk you step by step on how to take your database from Paper Tiger 4.1, um, export it to a format that Paper Tiger Online can understand, and then go ahead and upload it. So once you follow those steps, um, you'll be able to have a BAK file, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this BAK file. I'm not sure if you guys can see this screen yet, um, but I'm going to go ahead and browse for it. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and find that one. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So as soon as you find that file, you oh, um, you know, you'll see it pop up here, uh, sample.vak. And I'm going to go ahead and put a name for this database, whatever you want to call it. Um, as far as naming your database goes, this should be something that's that um, that's clear and easy to remember and it's descriptive about what the stuff inside of it is. So uh, let's pretend I am filing this for my business and this is going to be where all my business related things are going to be. So I'm going to say um, this is my uh, business database, business files. And I'm going to go ahead and click import my old database here. Now what's going to happen is uh, my database is going to go ahead and upload to the server and after a couple of minutes the uh, database import will go through, it'll process, and um, and your data will appear in, in this database. So let's just give it a couple minutes to um, to go ahead and upload. Should be a couple seconds actually. And one of the neat things that we did um, on this particular page is that this uh, this import actually automatically refreshes, so you don't have to you don't have to touch this page. You can just hit here and wait for a little bit, and as soon as this import is done, it's going to come up on um, on this page, which is something that's you know when we were developing the application, we were testing it. A lot of people are asking us questions about, well, you know, I'm importing the I'm importing the database, but it just sits there, you know, and literally they know that all they have to do is refresh the screen. So you know, we decided to to make sure that people weren't weren't going to get lost in this step. So let's give it a couple more seconds. Great. Well, there it is. So once the database has been imported, you'll see it show up here, and it'll actually be a link, so you can click on it. So also, just like I told you before, uh, once you start performing some actions in Paper Tiger, um, you'll see this recent activity. Um, area populate with things that you do and we just imported the database and there it is import uh, business files was imported by me so awesome let's go ahead and keep going with this I'm gonna go ahead and click on the, the database link and this is going to take me into uh, the application and as you can see here um, for those of you guys that are new um, this is what a typical paper tiger database might look like and um, you know, I know this might not necessarily be all business related, but for example, um, this person has um, action files, which are files that um, that are used day to day. Some archive stuff, which is more reference related, um, audio cassettes, books, keys, software, video. These are some of the types of things that you can organize with Paper Tiger. Um, so, and why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit of a primer on what it's like between filing action items and reference items. Um, okay, great. That's a great question. Uh, the, the basic uh, methodology of Paper Tiger is to help people keep things really simple. And if you're looking at your papers on your desk, there's essentially three um, decisions you need to make. One is a piece of paper, something that is actionable, something that may be an ongoing um, project, or something that um, is a permanent project. And an ongoing, um, an ongoing project may be something like Taxes 2010. It's something that will distinctly come to an end by, say, April, April 15th. Another um, action item might be something like the um, your monthly staff meeting. And if so a monthly staff meeting will, is not necessarily something that you want to put aside somewhere far away. You want it close by because it's something you refer to frequently. So that would be an action file. So anything that is actionable would be in that, that, um, that location. A reference location is something that may not necessarily be within hand's reach to you when you're sitting at your desk. 
a reference file may be something like Taxes 2009. It's something that you no longer need, immediately accessible, but it's something that you want to have handy should you need to refer to that file at a later date. So um, reference files will be very um, will be something a little bit um, less convenient to you when you're sitting at your desk, and they're files that you are not ready to have stored off-site quite yet, though. And they're just general reference files. Great. I think that's, uh, that's a very clear explanation. And guys, you know, uh, these are just some guidelines that we, we kind of provide for you. Like I said, Anne has a lot of experience filing. So, um, you know, it is a, a system that, that's proven to work for a lot of people, but we understand that not everybody's the same. So, again, these are just suggestions. You can file really in whatever way you'd like in Paper Tiger, and you've, if, if you've already got, you know, some sort of established architecture and how you want to file things, that's just fine. Um, but like I said, um, you know, this person has created an action location and a reference location to kind of diverge uh, those two types of files. So uh, let's pretend that we are brand new and we don't have any locations here. So uh, what do we want to do? A location is actually a place, it's actually the physical place, you know, like I was saying, the physical place where you're going to store your files. And this could be something like a desk drawer, which would lean more towards the action actionable type of, uh, of location, or it could be something like a file cabinet uh, or a set of file cabinets which would, would lean more towards the reference side um, of a location. But um, like I said, a location is just the name of the place where you're going to house your files. So once you start filing with Paper Tiger, the first decision you have to make is, okay, where am I going to create my first location where I want to hold my files? And for the most part, I'm sure all of you guys have this already. You know, you already have uh, places in your office or, you know, in your cubicle, et cetera, where you keep your files. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to pretend like I've got um, a, desk full, a desk drawer here. Um, that contains all of my actionable files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a location to represent that desk drawer and the stuff that I'm going to go ahead and put in. So um, if you click up here um, in the location view, you know, when you go into the database, the first thing you'll see is you're going to be in the location view. I'm going to go ahead and create a new location. <clears throat> this location, I'm going to call it desk drawer. And for the description, I'm just going to, you know, write a quick verbal description of where this location is and what it's for. Now, here is a very, very important field, which is the capacity. Um, and do you want to tell us a little bit about what uh, capacity means inside of a location? Sure. Um, the capacity is how many files do you anticipate that you can put in that drawer? Um, most box um, drawers, file drawers, are about can handle about 50 files, and that's an average size file. Um, the, the, a, a, a horizontal file drawer can handle about 100. So also some of the deeper file drawers that are like a tall vertical drawer that is a little bit longer, they can handle sometimes about 100, sometimes even 150 um, um, different individual files. The capacity is a flexible number, so that if you decide that um, you put in 50, and it turns out you've got a lot of skinny little folders in there, and you can add, you can change the capacity to 60. And that, this is also going to set up your basic for creating labels for that um, that location, which Fred will teach you about here in just a moment. Well, that sounds great. So like Anne said, uh, this is basically the amount of folders that you want to put in this desk and to begin with because um, they can be flexible. You can increase it. You can decrease it, uh, whatever you'd like. So uh, I'm going to follow Anne's suggestion. I'm going to start with 50 files because it's a small drawer. So this, is, this means that now I've just told the system that there's going to be 50 different containers in where I could place a file within this drawer. Uh, I'm not going to talk about re review frequency for now. I think Anne's going to cover some of that later in the um, in the webinar. So once I'm done putting in all my information, I'll hit Add This Location, and you'll see this location is going to come up here, and Paper Tiger is going to highlight it for us and say, hey, look, here's a new location. So the next step after setting up a location uh, in Paper Tiger is to actually create this location and set it up to be uh, ready for filing in the in your drawer. 
So in order to do that, uh, we've built a really cool tool that's going to save you uh, a lot of time um, setting up Paper Tiger. And this is a label generator. So in order to print some, in order to print labels uh, for my hanging file folders, which I have 50 of right now, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the top and click on the print tabs slash labels tab. And um, what this is going to do, this is going to create um, either stick on labels or uh, perforated labels, depending on which kind you want to choose, um, that will fit inside of your hanging file folders. And this is just awesome because uh, all you have to do is just print out this once. Uh, if you have the snap-on ones, it'll take you, you know, no time whatsoever to snap those off, slide them in the slide them in the drawers and you'll be you'll be ready to go. So let me just give you an example uh, of the the templates that we have. Again, this is for paid accounts. Free, the free account only allows you to use self-cut tabs. Um, but we've gone through the Avery catalog and have found um, almost all the uh, different templates that uh, relate to hanging file folders. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them to choose from, and chances are if you don't have any of these laying around in the office, uh, all you have to do is just either order them from Office Depot, um, and you know these are very standard, they're widely available, um, and um, you should be able to use them without a problem. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the self-cut tabs because this will actually print out um, an outline so that we can see a little bit what this what, what this is talking about. Um, so once I select the template, um, what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to print labels for um, only the locations that I want to print labels for. So in this case, the only one that I'm printing labels for is this desk drawer location, which is the one that I just created. And it, you can see here that it says maximum 50, uh, 50 items, and this just means that this location right now has only 50 folders in it. Um, and this will act automatically populate uh, so that you'll print one from number one to number 50. Uh, the other neat thing about this is that if you wanted, you could only print from one to 30. If you didn't want to put another 20 folders in there, you could just select one through 30, and this will only print out 30 of them. Um, but let's just go ahead and print out 50 for now. Um, the other thing that you can do is that once you expand the location um, and you say now this one has 100 items, you could go here and go 50 through 100, and that would only print out those new ones instead of having to reprint out all those old ones that are not necessary. So um, once you're done with this and you've chosen your range and you've chosen your location and your templates, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Generate Tabs PDF button. And what this is going to do is this is going to generate a PDF file that you're going to be able to take and print, um, and you'll be able to cut out in this particular template. Uh, what you'll do is you'll cut you'll cut out along this um, vertical edge here, and then along each one of these labels, and fold them together like it says here, and um, and install them into your hanging file folders. And um, one of the reasons why you want uh, we're actually printing these. Um, with this folding section in the back is so that it gives you uh, this this will give the printer paper a little bit more thickness so that they don't fall out on your hanging files uh, so um, and why don't you give us a little bit more of a uh, primer on what what it takes to actually install these on the uh, on the hanging file folders okay um, great Fred um, as you as, as Fred mentioned that with the with the free version you have the option of looking at um, the self-cut labels only. Um, so the, the paid option is, is really great because you have the options of using different sizes with the Avery labels. Um, that being said, how do you use these file tabs? Uh, people sometimes get really overwhelmed and what they do is they look at these plastic file tabs and they start throwing them haphazardly on your Pendaflex um, file folders and it feels a little disorganized sometimes. So let's go back to keeping it simple. And the, the way I install the, um, the labels is I take the insert tab, the little plastic tab, and I put it in the front of the Pendaflex file folder. And if, for those who don't know what a Pendaflex file folder is, think of those army green um, file folders that hang, that have the wire hangers that go inside of a, a mailing, excuse me, of a filing cabinet. Then what I would do is I would take the odd number um, file tabs, so desk drawer number one, and 
I would put the, all the odd numbers on the far left in the front. Hey, Fred, thanks. What a great idea to show the visual of what a pentaflex like file folder looks like. There you go. <laughs> okay. See how they have the tab, though, in the back of the file? I don't recommend that. What I do is I take that insert tab and put it to the top and to the left for all the odd ones. And then I stagger all the um, even ones about two tabs over. Not quite in the middle, but the one in between the far left and the middle. That is where I insert all the even number um, file tabs. So then when you look at your row of file folders, it's really clean. You know, the odds on the left and the, and the evens in the, um, just to the right of them. Also, that helps to identify very quickly if something is missing. So one, two, one, two is what I always say to myself when I'm putting them on, when I'm working with a client. Great. And Another, that's, um, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Another thing is I always do um, a tab right in the, a, a generic one in the front, what I call is the file index, which later will show you how to do a report. So you have a physical list of everything that's in that drawer, just in case you electronically can't um, access online your paper tiger. Awesome. Well, that's I think those are great tips. Um, so, like Anne was saying, once you've got this, once you've got it printed out, you cut it out, you install it in your folders, and then you install the folders back into this location. So now, you know, just to review, you'll see that this has generated 50 labels, which means that we're going to have to put 50 Pendaflex folders inside of the location. And once we go back to the Browse section of the application, and we go into this location, as you can see here, it says the capacity of 50 items. If we go in here, um, we're going to see that now there's 50 different open items within this location. And these, each one of these items um, correspond to your folder. So if item number one corresponds to folder number one in your drawer, item number two to folder number two, etc. And this is the basic premise of Paper Tiger, uh, that now we're going to be able to describe a file or you know, a folder in itself with the contents of it, we can be as descriptive as we want. Um, we don't have to uh, only fit the description in one small little tab, and we'll get all the benefits of filing it and being able to find it blazingly fast later in Paper Tiger. So, um, just to review, what we just went through is we uh, created a Paper Tiger account. We imported a sample database just so that you guys could see a little bit of data. Um, we created a location and we just printed out um, some labels. And the last part that, we, uh, that we're missing is actually doing some filing. And again, um, if you put this into perspective, you're only going to create a location um, every once in a while, every, you know, every time you're actually establishing a new place where, where you're going to file. So this is most of the setup and preparation work that will, um, that will get you ready to be able to file lightning fast later. So uh, like I said, let's go ahead and file an item. And, for example, uh, I've heard Anne use this, uh, you know, this way of explaining things before. Um, but actually, you know what, let's, let's go ahead and I'm going to let um, Anne explain a little bit. And I'm going to give her control of the screen for a second okay. so that she can, um, she can go ahead and file an item for you. Give me one second. All right. I'm great, Fred. I'll be happy to start up. And, and I'm looking at my desk drawer. And we're looking at the functionality in my desk drawer of information of files that I want to access fairly frequently because it's in prime real estate in my desk and it's that, that drawer right there on the right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to set up a new file. Do I have access? I think I give it, give me a second. Let's see if that one's the right one. There you go. Okay, I'm trying to hit new. I'm trying to hit new. Okay. Just hit new over here. There it goes. Okay, so I hit new from the far left there. And what I'm going to do is I am, say for instance, you're sitting at your office right now, and you printed out um, information regarding this webinar. So the new item name for me is going to be the Paper Tiger Webinar No Keywords. Okay, so this that's the general name that you would refer to for a name of a file. Now, keywords might mean that you know, three months from now, you may, well, hopefully you're not going to go back to it in three months, but next week you may decide that you can't remember the name of the folder, of the, oh, the name of the file. So some keywords might be the Monticello Company, 
it might be Fred, and or it might be Anne. So those are those are other words that may refer you to what else might be in that um, file. Another one might be software or filing. Okay. So those are key words that um, will be helpful when you're going to look for um, a file. And another advantage of that is, say you gave this to your assistant, and they don't know what you would file something under, but the word filing would really be helpful to direct them to where you would have kept notes on this um, Paper Tiger webinar. So we just added a new file here, as I just did here. Another way to add a new file is to hit New over there. And when I hit New, one of the things I want to show is that the Paper Tiger will pick the next chronological number of um, files available within that drawer. Now, we're, so the next one is going to be, or since we're in taxes, tax season here, taxes 2010. And keywords are W2, W2s, excuse me. W-2s, 1099s, um, so maybe year-end um, bank statement, um, and say um, interest form. I don't know what the technical word is there offhand, but you get the idea. So we're going to be adding that to desk drawer number two. And let's add another one. Okay, say for instance, um, this morning I lost my Bluetooth um, headset. So I ran off to Target and I bought a new one. So I'm going to put in there my Bluetooth um, receipt. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not sure if I'm going to like the comfort level of that. I want to keep it handy in a file. And what we're going to do keyword is maybe say Target, because I don't remember where I bought it, um, headset. Um, that's it. Now, earlier, um, earlier when I was talking, we, um, when Fred was showing us about the um, the dates on the paper tiger, one of the things that when you're making a new um, file is an action date. Um, we can indicate. I just bought this new Bluetooth um, headset, and as I said, I bought it at Target. And they may only have a two-week return policy on electronics. So what I want to make sure I do is um, say by next Friday, I want to make sure that I um, trigger myself in memory that if I want to return it, I need to go back to this file um, by that date. So let's add that to desk drawer number three. So now I've got three items within my action file folder. All right, I've got the Paper Tiger webinar, the taxes, and Bluetooth. Where is the, um, do you want to go further from here? Do you want me to go a little further with this, Fred? Sure, and the, the, only, the only thing that I wanted to mention that uh, I know this might be obvious, but uh, what Anne has just done, she's just taking uh, three documents and has assigned, uh, she's assigned a relationship to them in Paper Tiger Online. So what this means is that this Bluetooth receipt now needs to go inside the note folder number three. Taxes needs to go inside folder number two. And Paper Tiger webinar notes will go inside folder number one. Um, and, and let's keep going from there, Anne. OK, so now, um, OK, is it OK for me to get a little bit more advanced right now? Do you feel like we've covered most of the basics? Yeah, I think so. Let's go for it. OK, all right. So um, here, here is a great idea. Um, now, we're into. Um, 2011. So we're going to create a new file called Taxes 2011. And it's pretty obvious what we're going to put in there, but let's just say, you know, receipt, um, charity, excuse me, charity, donations. You know, the basic ideas that you might want to pull related to Taxes 2011. So we went ahead and we added that drawer now, excuse me, that that container to my drawer of files in the desk drawer. All right. Um, people will say, um, how do, now it's at the end of the year. I like to look at the fact that here it is tax time. And you know, you may have been collecting papers last year, and that action drawer is getting a little tight. 
your knuckles are getting a little bruised every time you go to pull out a file. So what you want to do is start merging or moving, excuse me, removing that information now to another location. And most likely what you're doing is you're going to another location called reference, where we're going to take our taxes 2010 and move it over to reference because you no longer need to be keeping track of paperwork on a daily or weekly basis. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to choose that file, Taxes 2010, and what we're going to do is we're going to transfer it, and I'm going to say move to a new area, and the new location is where I want to move those files. Since it's 2010, and I want to make it fairly convenient because I may be referring to it over the next year or so. I want to choose to go to the reference file. And and let, let me just yeah. uh, point something out here for you guys. Um, Paper Tiger is actually smart enough to know where um, how much space you have in each location. So if you guys notice here, this um, this desk drawer category, or I'm sorry, this desk drawer location, it's actually the current one. So it's not it's not going to let you move the file into the current location. But for other locations that don't have enough space, meaning all the folders inside of that location are uh, taken up, you also won't be able to um, to select them. And what this does is this just helps you uh, stay organized and not make mistakes. We're trying to prevent you from putting something where there's no more room. Uh, that's all I wanted to, to point out there. That's, that's great, Fred. It's making the system much more innovative. And that's a feature that we did not have on the desktop version. So the um, this is much more um, workable for the online version. Great new feature. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the reference to the new folder and uh, to the new location. And since taxes 2010 is something that we can get rid of in, uh, um, let's say, seven years, what we're going to do is we're going to put an action date of seven years, 2018. Ooh, that seems scary. Um, taxes 2000, date 31st, 2018. And what we're going to do is now, I've got an action date on there, which will remind us, there'll be a pop-up later down the line at that date, which will remind us that we can toss that because it's no longer legally required to keep. The paper tiger in ASTA, now, do you want to be reminded, or excuse me, do you want a confirmation that you're doing this transfer? Okay, if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one project, you're doing this by yourself or with an assistant, and chances are you're not going to get interrupted in the next couple of minutes moving the file from the action area to the reference area, then I'll say, no thanks, I don't need a reminder. So let's go ahead and move this item. And what the paper tiger has now done, we're going to, I'm going to type in the word, um, 2010, because I want to find a file that has that work number in it. And you can see that it is now in a reference location number four. And it moved everything from the location that I was in an action to now the reference area. Okay. And as I said, what it does do is it goes to the next available number. And I'm going to look at the location of reference. OK, we're getting there. What's going to happen is you're going to see that number four with the next available number. Let me go ahead and refresh that for you. Hang on. OK. There we go. OK, so all right, so we're going to go back to location. OK, so if we go to reference, whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, when we went to re reference, you'll see that if we, I, I maybe did it a little bit backwards. I could have shown earlier that number four was empty. But now if I were to go ahead and put in another um, new file, let's say for instance, 
another new, is going to choose number 7 as the next available number. You may look in your drawer and think to yourself, oh, I've, I, I've got quite a few files. And you might think you've got to go to the bottom. And the reality is you want to fill up all these little spaces here so that you're not you know, having three drawers full of files with all these empty slots. So the intuitiveness of having the next available number is incredibly helpful. All right. Um, another idea that people um, say, well, when you had your, okay, your reference, um, let's go in and say reference. I'm going to do a new one. And I am going to have um, a taxes um, historical um, 2000, excuse me, but I want to do taxes backup um, 2011. All right. And what's going to be in here is just general information. Um, it may be um, things to look for, look for next year's preparation. And just maybe little notes to yourself. Um, but it's not necessarily, it may take too much room in your action file drawer, but you want to be able to have that information handy when you're doing your taxes next year. So we're going to add that to the reference file drawer. And then I'm going to go now over to my 2011 files. Something comes up and I want to refer to my 2011 files. Now I'm thinking a year ahead here. Well, what I have is I know that I have reference files and I've got desk drawer files. So say we're a year ahead of things now and we are filing our taxes for 2011. I've handed everything off to my accountant. Well, I no longer need to keep that space in my action file drawer, the desk drawer. And what I want to do is I still want to transfer, but the methodology is here that I want to merge it to an existing file. I don't want to create another file in the reference drawer for taxes 2011. I want to include it with what I physically have over there in the reference file drawer for taxes backup. I'm going to choose, since I know it's over in the reference drawer, I'm then going to choose the topics. Oops. Okay, the topics that are available based on the names of the item names. And what I'm looking for here is taxes 2011. Oops, see, there it is, number seven. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to merge the, um, the action files into the 2011. And again, we could put the action date here if we want. But since we went through that already, I'm not going to do it again. But this time, it's a little bit more complicated, and I want to make sure, I want to confirm what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and merge these files. And what it's showing is um, you can merging into location reference slot number seven. So it has moved everything from that area to reference file seven. I'm going to go ahead and hit Merge Item, and we're ready to go. Not quite, though, because as you see, the status is a little bit more temporary right now. We have um, the action file from Desk Drawer as a, as a merged source, which means that something is pending. And it is being um, pending into the destination of the reference file area. So I'm really comfortable that this is what I want to do. So what I want to do is I take the physical on papers out of the desk drawer, um, number four, and I go to confirm. And I indicate that I am ready to take the, um, the source file from um, the desk drawer and move it to reference seven, because I physically have it in my hand, and I'm ready to go. I click that. It says I'm ready to confirm it. Excuse me. I click that again. I go ahead and confirm it. And it's ready to move. So now, 
the paper type confirms that we've transferred that. When I go to type in, I'm looking for all my 2011 files. I search the database, and it shows that we have only one file. What's really interesting, though, is now what happened is you see all the keywords that I had from the, um, the previous file now are included in these keywords. The general information, things to look for next year's preparation, that's now in there. But the key words of receipt, charity, and donation were now merged into the topic for the, that, that, that file folder. Well, that's a little bit more comprehensive than the basics, but these are really, this is one of the greatest tools of um, Paper Tiger for keeping your files organized and keeping all your information together and knowing when, that it's okay to keep some information of similar topic separate and know later down the line that you can merge them together. And now, there's, there's so much more we can do, but I know we're getting close on time. And let, let me just point out one last thing, uh, and this is, uh, I, I think this is an important concept of Paper Tiger, is that each one of these folders that you have that are labeled, you know, by location name, for example, reference number seven or action number four, those are just containers. So when Anne is referring to merging the files, what you would physically do in your file cabinet is, is you would take the content of the folder, action number four, pull the content out, meaning all those pieces of papers that you have in there, and you leave the, the folder, number four, remaining in your action cabinet. And then you take that content and you put it into um, the folder number seven. So basically what happens is that your containers remain there, and now if we look at our um, desk drawer, which I believe that's where it was, um, uh, I believe it was item number four, now it's empty. So what that means is that you took all the content out of it and you placed it in a different folder. And now that container can be used for something else. Say I'm going to file something else in number four. Now I can file my uh, my sports equipment or something similar. Now what that happens, now what happens is this folder has now become a container for something else, which is uh, another one of the important things about Paper Tiger because uh, each folder is generic in itself, and they can just hold anything, as much information or whatever information that you want to hold. So, you know, and the, um, I know we're getting close to time, but you just mentioned something that's really awesome. That with the paper tiger, we're talking about paper right now, and and even the word is paper tiger. But the reality is, is that you can set up a, um, a container or a location for something that is a, a container. I often have clients that set up a um, paper tiger location for keys, like we have right here. And what they do is we um, you know, get one of those um, key, um, like file base, and we inventory all the keys, one through 10, and we physically put their masters in that cabinet. So you can use the paper tiger to store and inventory anything. And you have the confidentiality of just putting a little number on there and defining exactly what key number one, two, or three, or four is. No more lost or stranded or orphan keys. Great, Ann. So it looks like we've um, got a little bit of time to answer some questions. So let me pull up some of the questions that, um, that we've got some from some of our members, and let's see if we can answer some of those. So one of the questions is, um, I know a lot of you guys might not have time to stick around for the entire webinar, um, and one of our listeners has asked whether uh, these are going to be available somewhere else, and the answer is yes, just to let you know, we will be posting these on our blog. We've already had two webinars uh, that we have recorded and we have ready to go. I know we haven't had a chance to put them up there yet uh, just because of some logistics issues, but we're getting ready to post all of our webinars. Um, on our blog so that you can come back and watch them um, after the fact. So these uh, these are really great resources. Uh, you know, in the previous ones, we've covered some of the similar topics, but uh, every every one of these webinars is different. People ask different questions, and, and sometimes, you know, we try to tailor the webinar to whatever you guys need at that certain point in time. Um, let me see if there's any other questions that our viewers are uh, interested in getting answered. 
Um, another one of our uh, listeners is asking whether we'll be offering more advanced webinars, and the answer is yes. Um, you know, like I just said, we we want to tailor these webinars specifically for you guys. Um, so if there's some of you out there that are uh, you know that are borderline paper tiger experts, uh, we will be holding one of these webinars in the future that's directly targeted to more advanced topics like uh, network users, uh, more advanced merging, more organi organizational tips. Um, you know, we can show you some more features uh, regarding, um, you know, conflicts and how you can avoid uh, what Paper Tiger does to help you work with multiple people at the same time on the same file, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, All right. Can I add, Fred, there, um, that we really want to make this about um, our users. So if you have a topic out there that you're thinking that you really would like us to address, give us your um, input and let us know. What, what you want, because we can give you all different kinds of customized um, training programs. Let's make it something that you want, and I'll, I'll be happy, as well as Fred will be happy, to make it that's helpful to you. Sure. And and here's uh, one last question that we can go ahead and answer before we run out of time. Uh, one of our listeners asked, um, she created two locations and put one location as the top drawer filing ca in her filing cabinet and then another location as the second uh, file uh, drawer in the file cabinet. Am I doing it wrong? And would you care to answer that? You know, um, my, my question to you is, do those two drawers have the same functionality? And what I mean by that is, it, are they both just a continuation of the same topic? If it's reference on the top and reference on the bottom, I would say um, you should make those one location. If the top drawer um, is reference files and the bottom drawer are client files, then I would keep it as two separate locations, indicating top drawer reference files and the bottom drawer client files. And and why don't you tell why don't you explain how you'd go about setting up two different drawers as one single single location? All right. Well, what I would do is it would be a new it would be a location. Let me go ahead and close this out. So do I have the screen? Yes, I believe you do. I can. I can. Okay. I can say what we're I'm going to do here. What I would do is I would say those two drawers are going to be client files. What I would do is I would set up a location and create a new location. And I would say um, client file. And I would say the two, excuse me, the two drawer filing cabinet in Fred's office. And since it's two drawers, it might be 100 items. And I would add this location. So what you're doing is you were saying that it was a two-drawer filing cabinet. But then I, so as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, that may not have been specific enough. And my, what I would say is maybe add a note. Um, both drawers include client files. And that way people know that it's all the um, client files in his two-drawer filing cabinet. Great, and what that would mean is that uh, basically what you can do is you can put 1 through 50 in the first drawer and then 51 through 100 in the second drawer, and it might be a good idea to note that uh, in the front of the cabinet so that you can actually just, uh, you know, depending on the range, whether it's file 60, you'd open up the second drawer, and if it's file 10, you'd know to open up the first drawer. Would that be okay? And that's a great idea, and darn it, I had another idea. I get all excited about this. But let me just quickly mention that with the paper tiger, you know, people are saying clients, clients. I, you know, I want to see them all in alphabetical order. Well, um, you can. I still, would, you know, recommend that you use our the numbering system. But then that's when you would have the access of referring to. And this might be another um, training. Is we have reports, and you can run a report for that specific drawer. And um, what we're going to, you would be doing is you would be looking at the client file drawer, and you would look at that location and run it then in alphabetical order. So you have a physical list of your clients in alphabetical order. And remember that tab I said in the front that you would put a, your index list. You could then sort it by name, 
so that you would see that Janet Baker came before Ann McGurdy, even though Janet Baker's number may be 32 and Ann might be client file number 6. All right? That's great. So I think we are uh, just about a time. Let's see if uh, Janet can help us out and uh, go ahead and uh, close, the close us away for the day. Just one second. Hi, Fred. I'm on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Janet. Thank you to Ann and Fred for all of the great helpful tips. I believe this has been very helpful. I've been uh, uh, typing away trying to answer some of the questions uh, privately uh, offline. But again, we will be posting the uh, questions and answers on our blog. Um, you just go to our uh, blog, thepapertiger.com, click on the blog tab at the top and go down to the category section, you'll see a webinar uh, category there. Um, you may know that our developers are working on a digital enhancement to Paper Tiger Online. So if you want to sign up to participate in the digital enhancement beta testing, you, you can do so by completing the survey. I'm going to uh, send the link to the survey in under the chat section right now, so you should be able to see that link. Um, just as a reminder, we have extended our 20% off sale through the end of today. So if there's anyone on the call that does not already have Paper Tiger, catch the sale. Um, we want to thank you again for attending today's webinar. Just to let you know, we do plan to post the recording on our website so you can refer to it whenever you need to. Please feel free to give us your feedback by emailing us anytime. Our email is sales, S-A-L-E-S, at thepapertiger.com. Um, again, all attendees for today's webinar will be entered into Paper Tiger's Apple iPad contest ending March 31st, and Ann has, uh, again, offered 30 free minutes over the phone for anyone interested in a more professional one-on-one -on -one, um, session with her. You can contact Ann at Ann McGurdy at strategize and organize.com. I will also post that uh, information in the chat section here and send that out to you guys. Um, again, we want to thank Ann for uh, a, a great presentation today, and we always appreciate her time and the great helpful tips that she provides to all of us. All right, thank you. Thanks You're again. welcome. Okay, guys, it looks like we're signing up. Thanks so much for your time, and we will see you next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy day for talking.